Oh, look at that. Today on the Busy Gardener channel, we are going bananas. You know, most people watching this video have eaten a banana, you eat it fresh or you freeze it and put it in a smoothie or you cut it in down the middle and put peanut butter and chocolate in it or whatever it is. It's one of the most commonly eaten fruit in the world and yet most people watching this video have not seen bananas be grown or be harvested. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share a few tips on how to harvest your bananas and store them. Let's get busy. We believe everybody should be able to grow tasty fruits and vegetables in their own yard, in their own backyard, in their own orchard or garden. These bananas have been a really interesting thing for us to do. Now, this is the first year that these have fruited. We planted them about a year and a half ago and they're just starting to ripen up. And actually the thing that's making this a little bit pressing is we're supposed to get down to like 28 degrees, which is pushing the limits of this banana being able to survive or not do something weird and we don't wanna risk it. You see how tattered these <laughs> leaves have gotten because of the intense winds that came through. Oh, and you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna share a couple of things that you ought to do with your bananas after you harvested them so that way they turn out really good for you. I wanna share a few banana facts you might not be aware of. Okay, so the banana looks like a tree. It's tall, you know, that's what we think a tree is and it's got fruit somewhere at the top of it, also like a tree. Well, it turns out that bananas themselves as a plant are not actually a tree. Banana is technically a type of herb. And this thing that looks like a trunk here is actually something that's called a pseudo stem. So it's not a true stem, it's actually a wrapping of leaves that make their way upward. And what happens is through the middle of that is this flower spike that makes its way up the tree and then pops over the top. You see that hooked area up there? and it begins flowering. The first flowers that form are the female flowers and that's what becomes the fruit. It doesn't have to be pollinated in order to form fruit, it just forms that fruit. And then beneath it uh, grows this other flower and it kind of continues to make its way down. We ended up chopping it off around there to let some of the resources of the plant go back up into that. Another interesting fact that you might not be aware of is that bananas are technically a berry. Isn't that weird? You think of berries as being small, blackberries or boysenberries or whatever it is, small little things you just throw in your mouth. And you don't think of something like this being a berry plant. The term berry has some very technical aspects to it in terms of how to how the ovary of the plant creates its thing and how it's fertilized, you know, what happens, how many layers of out, outer layer, middle layer and seed there are. So without getting too technical. These are actually berries, but you won't find them in the berry section of the store, so don't look. <laughs> And the way that a banana plant works is that it sends up that one initial stalk, it sends up that you know, flower spike, it fruits, it does this thing. But after this stalk has fruited, this stalk is done. It's spent and actually it's important to cut that down so that way those nutrients can go to the other plants that are growing up. And, and the way that these guys grow and replace themselves, these bananas, is by growing these little pups, these little suckers that we call pups. And what happens is pups end up going and becoming the next year's fruit or subsequent years. I actually have, you can't kind of see it because it's hidden back here. I feel like I'm in a jungle, like Gilligan's Island or something. This is the one that the, the fruit is growing on right now. And this is the one that we're allowing to grow up next to it. And this should be our next fruiting one. But then we're kind of identifying some pups down here that are gonna eventually be our next ones. And so excited about that. They're also very easy to transplant. As you can see, we took and transplanted this one over here, right next to it. I took one of those pups out and stuck it in the ground over there and it's growing really well. There's a ton of growth, but when you initially plant it, it's gonna take about 15 to 18 months from the time that you plant it till you're able to get fruit out of that thing. Now, typically these fruit will take about two to three months to ripen up after the flower comes out. It should be ready to harvest. Although I'm thinking back, I feel like this came out like four months ago and we haven't seen too many of the signs of ripening, although these things have just started to plump up. And so if it wasn't for freezing, perhaps I'd give it another week, but we've got to harvest this thing now. Okay, so there are two main ways that you're able to harvest banana. One of those is by looking at the color of those banana as the top ones begin to lose their dark green look and begin turning light green or even a little yellowing at the top, you can go off and cut them off one hand at a time. And they ripen from the top of the from the bunch to the bottom. So the top ones are gonna be the, the ones that ripen up the, the most quickly, working their way down to the bottom. So I'm gonna climb up there and I'm gonna cut off one of these hands of bananas. That sounds bad. I'm gonna cut off your hand. 
<laughs> okay, the other way, and this is how they do it in the commercial setting, is by taking and cutting into this stalk and allowing the entire thing to lean forward and then cutting off the entire bunch at a time. And I get it, that makes a lot of sense, especially in a commercial setting, because then they're able to harvest it all at one time, send it down the row, get it packed and out of there, instead of paying that labor to continually come out and climb up ladders. So it's, it makes sense commercially. I think I'm also gonna cut this down in this case, um, but you got a couple of options, especially if you have a dwarf variety that doesn't require you to get on a ladder, you may wanna cut it off just from the, from the plant itself. But in this case, because it's so high up, I don't wanna keep getting on a ladder every few days or whatever it is. I'm just gonna cut the bunch off and then show you uh, how, to, how to store this and take care of it after you've cut it off. All right, let's get cutting. All right, up the ladder we go. Hey, look who it is, it's my friend the banana. Boy, oh, she's sure pretty up close, isn't she? Okay, well this is pretty cool. Up close, we're able to see that these are actually starting to yellow up a little bit. Now, the size of the fruit is supposed to be bigger than this, and I think it had to do with fertilizing. Banana trees, being tropical, want a much more regular feeding than the three times a season that we were, we've were we been doing. Now, I've been throwing some more stuff down there, some more nitrogen down there. I took and threw some uh, potassium-rich you know, ashes from our fireplace down there. And so we expect that this plant is going to be more vigorous the next time, the next ones that come up. Um, but in the meantime, this isn't bad. These are little snack size guys. So they're looking plump. While I'm up here, I should show you that uh, this support that we made for the banana uh, has been actually really important in supporting the weight of this banana bunch. Um, this thing as it's grown has gotten heavier and heavier. I'll be curious to see what it weighs once I take it down. But uh, this thing has really helped, especially because we have had winds coming from the north that way and it's come through. And so having something that is supporting this and not allowing this, oh, this is really good. This, is, this really helped out a lot in terms of keeping this from toppling over. So very happy with this frame. I've got a video on that and I'll put a link to it in the description so you can check it out. Okay, so to make this cut, I'm actually gonna use this uh, cool knife that has these like super micro serrations on it. And that'll help me to just cut through the stalk of this. Oh, look at that. Hey, I'm so happy we got this little bunch of bananas off of here. Isn't that cute? So these almost remind me of like the little Thai bananas that I see at the Asian market when I go over there. This is one way to get this. Now we're gonna cut down this main stock and you're gonna see the main way that these are usually taken down commercially and probably a way if you've got a tall banana like this that you're gonna wanna do it too. Okay, this thing is ready to come down. I need to take the support out of the way so that way the thing will actually come down. Okay, normally what they use in these commercial plantations is using something like a machete. And a machete is really convenient. You know, it's an inexpensive tool. It's easy to be resharpened, but it doesn't give a ton of control. Because what happens if I cut through this entire stock and it falls down on me? So I'm gonna use this saw, Corona Tools. This is awesome, by the way, it's a pull saw. So we're going to uh, stand out of the way so that it hopefully doesn't fall on me as I do it, because there's a bit of wind, and we're gonna see how it goes. So the idea here as I do this is that it bends over. We're not trying to chop it down so that it falls. We're trying to cut a wedge out of it so that the entire thing leans over and makes it easier to harvest. All right, the entire thing's coming. The idea here is that the weight of the this stock and all this stuff is being supported by this trunk, as opposed to me cutting this bunch off really high up and it falling to the ground. So what I'm gonna do is, this is now nice and low. If I let go of it, oh, it almost like gently just comes down here. Okay, cool. And that was it. We did it. We got our first bunch of bananas. Came down safe and sound, didn't fall to the ground. Okay, so now we've looked at two different methods. One is going and cutting a hand off at a time from the top down, and the other is cutting off the bunch. Now let's go take a look at what we ought to do with these bananas. We made it indoors just in time. It totally started raining again. We got several days of rain, so grateful that we were able to harvest the bananas. Here we've got our hand of bananas that I cut straight off of the plant, and then here's the uh, bunch of bananas that um, we're gonna show how to store also. So whichever method you went with, um, I'm gonna show you how to deal with both. Here's some tips on storing your bananas. If you want your bananas to ripen uniformly, then take and uh, keep this together. Just put it on your countertop. If you want it to ripen more quickly, take and put 
of your bananas in a paper bag. Could be a big bag like this or a small lunch bag, totally fine. It's going to allow those uh, bananas to breathe a little bit, um, but also allow that ethylene gas that they release that causes ripening to kind of circulate a little bit more quickly and not dissipate. So they'll ripen more quickly in a paper bag, but they'll ripen uh, uniformly as well. If you don't want them to ripen as quickly, let's say it's maybe just you and you bought this bunch of bananas or this hand of bananas, then you wanna separate those bananas out off of the hand and stagger them, put them apart from each other. So that way that gas, as, it's, uh, as that ethylene gas is being released, it doesn't cause its little neighbors to ripen as quickly. So those are three ways to store a hand of bananas. Um, do not put it in your refrigerator because that can dry them out and make them really weird. Also, don't put them inside a plastic bag because that's gonna trap all of the ethylene gas and cause it to ripen too quickly and the inside might not be fully ripened. So you want a kind of consistent ripening through your banana so that way you don't get any surprise in the middle of it and go, ugh, this isn't ripe. <laughs> the purpose of this rope right here is to suspend um, this bunch of bananas and allow it to ripen from the top to the bottom. So if you find a cool, dry place to store your bananas in the shade. This can be outdoors as well, but we're gonna have some really cold evenings and I want a more consistent temperature. Um, so we're choosing the garage. I'm gonna kind of move it over there so it's not right in the middle of our whole thing. But for the purpose of this video, <laughs> I'm just putting this right here. And so as you come in, you'll be able to harvest your bananas from the top to the bottom. Now, let's say that you wanted to use all of these at one time. You might harvest all of these put them all inside a paper bag and let that all, all that ripening happen together. Um, and so that way you can kind of freeze them or whatever's going on if you wanna do it all at one time. Okay, I'm gonna show you kind of how to suspend this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna start this kind of high up. And I want this on a self-tightening knot. It's kind of like what I use on a fish hook. And you want it to be suspended in the same orientation that it was so that way you can come down and harvest from the top down. Um, the top of this has kind of like a little knob that it can, it's gonna hang on to, so that way I don't have to put it over any existing bananas. Perfect. So now I'll be able to cut the hands off around this and uh, as we work our whole way down. So excited! Well, I appreciate you tuning into this episode of the Busy Gardener channel. We looked at a couple of different ways to harvest bananas, um, what to do with the bananas after you've harvested them, and I hope this helps you. What do you think that I've missed? How do you like harvesting your bananas? Have you tried the actual ice cream banana, which I guess is more elusive than previously thought? Well, anyway, I appreciate you being a part of this channel, and um, hey, whether you've got one bunch of bananas in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.